welcome to a uh, panel uh, role playing games as uh, visual media. And uh, my, uh, my name is Peter Atkinson. I'm delighted to be uh, a guest of the convention here. Um, my uh, background was as a founder and CEO of Wizards of the Coast for 11 years uh, from its inception in 1990 until the sale to Hasbro in 2001. And 2002, I acquired Gen Con. And since 2002, Gen Con has been my uh, primary business. A few years ago, uh, I decided I didn't really want to run Gen Con day to day. I just wanted to show up for the, the photo ops and uh, have fun gaming. So uh, my, my good friend Adrian is, currently runs a business, so I, I, I still own it and oversee it. The, um, uh, and I recently took on a hobby uh, of sorts. I've uh, gone, I'm enrolled in film school. So lately I've become very interested in what can I do, uh, in addition to, to Gen Con, what, what can I do to help uh, role playing games? And I've decided to take a venture uh, towards media, which will be the topic of our, our panel. And um, that's, that's kind of my introduction. And joining me for this panel is... Hello, uh, I'm Martin Ellrikson. I was last here in 2003. Uh, ranting about the apparent connections between ritual magic and role playing and how immersing in um, different worlds can make you a greater and more empathetic person. Um, that was the beginning of a stint into um, semi madness and alternate reality games of blending reality and fiction for a few years, uh, working among other things with. Uh, uniting role-playing methodology and big media uh, in alternate reality games, working with Swedish television, uh, ending up uh, working with Fox television on the Dollhouse uh, web launch, and then later with Tim Kring who did Heroes with a commercial game for Nokia. And all of these projects have basically been about the same thing, and that is integrating the methods of tabletop and live action role playing with uh, broadcasting formats. So that is what I'm doing now. Uh, and that has brought me to trying to crack the case of documenting and filming live action role playing games. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the project that we're running now called The Spiral, which is a six episode uh, th Euro thriller. It's going to start to be broadcasted at, in Yule uh, on the 2nd of September this year. So, yeah. So we have Great. some. Yeah, we 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 realized yesterday. I'm not invited or anything like that. I'm not the guest <laughs> of honor this year. But when we got drunk yesterday, we realized that hmm, we are both fascinating by documenting and showing and making advocacy for role playing in different formats in media formats. Yeah. So um, I'm very happy to be invited to this panel. Well, thank you. And, and it was very. I consider it a very fortuitous. I um. I, I want to make it clear that what we're exploring is in its infancy in terms of trying to figure out how to do this well. I believe that uh, we're opening a window into something totally new and potentially revolutionary for hobby games. And we're going to start by kind of explaining why we think it's important and, and what it is. And so I was a little nervous because I, I'm working on this and I'm like, somebody's going to tell me I'm doing it all wrong. And in fact, Actually, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that one or more of you will look at what I'm doing and say, okay, that's a cool idea, but it would be so much better if you just did this or that. I, I would love to hear that because what my intentions are pure and what I want to accomplish with this is something that the better we as a community can understand this and get good at this, this is something that I believe could really help uh, role playing and live live action role playing uh, both. I'm lumping them together here now. Now that I've met Martin, so I um, uh, so w once I kind of let the word out that I was looking for this, uh, Timon was uh, kind enough to introduce me. Say, well, this is the guy you want to meet. And so yes, last night <clears throat> after a few um, scores <laughs> uh, rounds of, of 
uh, something. Uh, we um, <laughs> we met up at a room party and just uh, immediately hit it off. And uh, I said, well, Martin, you have to come and join this mm -hmm. panel I'm doing. And now I feel so much more secure because there's somebody else who's is crazy enough to be thinking the same way I'm thinking and doing this, doing uh, what I'm doing, but from a totally different angle. You'll see what we're doing is, is completely different, but yet part of the same umbrella, and I would love it if out of this, these types of conversations there became more and more uh, uh, sticks in this tent. Yeah, yeah, sure, okay, uh, that, that works, all right. So, um, so, what, uh, uh, so let's be clear what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the activity of role-playing games, which could be around a table, which is what I've done, or live-action gaming, which is what Martin has done, and integrating that with media. Whether that, when I say media, that could be online. I'm doing a web series. He's doing web connected to a television series. I'm doing narrative short films. But the whole idea is how to bring this together and give it more visualization for passive viewers, for people to, to look in and, and watch this. And that might be, by the way, it might be that that's a really bad idea because it's about participatory, but, but we want to try it. So what, why, do we, why are we interested in this, yeah. Martin? <laughs> to me, I've had this sort of, over the last maybe 10 years, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of the Nordic live action role playing community and also like of experimental and very emotional tabletop scene. And I've seen like the maturity of this hobby has grown into something that it's a, it's a viable cultural artifact for anybody. And I think it's a shame that it's sort of, we love each other and there's enough of us to keep this going forever. Uh, but still the potential is so great that I would love to show people, yes, like, this is awesome, come and join us. And how, so, so for me it is a way of working with role playing advocacy. And I think you made a really good comparison yesterday when you talked about like skateboard videos or snowboarding videos. In a lot of other uh, subcultures or interest groups, there is this very strong sharing of experience through visual medium. So, and, the, and that has matured into the form of the skate film, which is today a very watchable and very, like, but the first skate films were shit. It's like, yeah, it has me doing a face plant or whatever. So, but that was inter-community work. And I think if we start by doing inter-community work, but also like, then there's a possibility for other people to look in and say, hey, that's awesome. And specifically for me, I try to consciously bring in sort of big names or respected actors that have an interest in role playing and sort of saying that they have that and showing some of the best uh, like, uh, and, and like, uh, key people in the live action role playing community playing alongside with Elmer Beck or Tuva Novotny or, or, or the sort of European actors. Because that to a mainstream audience gives a greater degree of acceptance and inclusion in their worldview. That okay, role playing is something that could be fun and I could do it over the weekend. And it's pretty cool since these people are doing it as well. And I've seen sort of how it's done uh, on TV and so on. It, one good example how this has worked already, I think is Barda is the example that you just cannot avoid. And that's a children's television series uh, based on live action role playing, which was launched in Denmark. And it's now, and has been in Sweden for four, three or four seasons. And it's now launching in Norway by uh, Erland Eidsem Hansen, is, is one of the key people there. And they're all role players. Huh? Also in Finland. Also in Finland, yeah. And that is kids doing live action role playing. And this has, as everybody knows probably, in Denmark you have a huge children's LARP scene. And that is because of that smart medialization of role playing. So to me it's not a question whether it can work or not, it has already worked. So let's do that for sort of more mature, more grown up, um, more reflective and deep role playing as well. Or just over the top blood and gore right. <laughs> action right. or whatever. I mean, that's, it's now worked for kids. Can we make it work for adults as well? That's sort of that, right. that's one of the questions. Right, right. So, uh, what we want to do is kind of show you what each of us have been doing mm -hmm. in this area. But before we kind of dive into what essentially are going to be really big examples mm -hmm. with some graphics and stuff, um, is there any questions that would be good at this point while we're kind of talking philosophically about this <laughs> idea? Let's hit it. There will be questions afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, cool. um, you were talking about um, how it is possible, how we expose a greater audience to uh, role-playing games, especially live-action role-playing games. 
but uh, just since we're since we're on this philosophical stretch, mm -hmm. and since I'm here because I, I just had to see this, I would I had no idea if this was going to be involved. Um, such a strange concept. Um, <laughs> do you feel like this could also bring a new element to the actual? Of oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I. Well, I'll, I'll say from role playing. Mm -hmm. be, you'll do the live action. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if uh, one of the things I like to say, especially to anybody out there who's a game designer, um, well, well, if you're designing a role playing game, what are your main criteria and and I know I'm going to say there's one right answer, but it's going to be something like that the game is fun, the people have a good time, this sort of thing. Uh, there's, some, there's some box that we would all kind of agree on what the, what the criteria for a good role-playing game. Well, what if the, the, uh, a role-playing game, what if you designed a role-playing game where the criteria would be it's fun to watch? Hmm. Okay, that would all of a sudden be a new way to think about the design of a role-playing game. Uh, how would you design a role-playing game if it was more inter if it was more important to think about how the the game would look on a camera, than or how it would be filmed or how you bring the camera into the role-playing game? Um, w what if that was the design criteria? And I throw that out there and run, please. Somebody come up with some cool ideas and email me at peterjenkon.com and uh, <laughs> reach out to me. Uh, I'd love to feature it. <laughs> and so. My, that's what I'm saying. Is I, I think absolutely, as soon as, we, as, as this becomes explored, people will find new ways of role-playing, and I assume you're going to agree for live action, based on, on how it integrates with media. And that's interesting. And how, how long has it been since we've had... I mean, it's not very often that we, it, we, that we get the opportunity to rethink what we love so much here, role-playing games. Yeah. To me, it's um, a lot finding a secondary stage or finding another stage, which is then social media. Because we're like, okay, where are we going to push this content? Where are we going to push this cl these clips from the game? Uh, where you can follow this fictitious artist commune, which is the story of the game. Then. Um, so, and then the decision was made, yeah, let's do it on Facebook. Let's do it as if it was a real thing. So basically, we're now LARPing on Facebook. And that, of course, is a technique that can be done in campaigns, like in downtime. You can continue your characters on Facebook and so on. So that is already like one possible innovation in running campaigns, and modern-day contemporary campaigns. Of course, loads of people have used it already, uh, and so on. But we're exploring that field. So that's a very direct way that the, the need to reach new audiences and the, the need to use social media has then affected the way that the game is played. Um, we have a short LARP campaign with like three events, and between them, there's Facebook role-playing and posting of videos as a way of progressing the game. So that is, Facebook role-playing is fascinating. I, can, can I do yeah. a little yeah. short yeah, thing yeah, yeah, on yeah, Facebook yeah. role-playing? Sure, of course. There's, uh, there was a group called True Facebook Role Players and had 20,000 members uh, in 2006 before Facebook started to close down their accounts because Facebook sort of declared war on role-players. Because this role-playing game was sort of Jersey Shore-like, everybody's a drug-addicted asshole game that gained massive popularity on Facebook. And people are stealing people's identities. So they like, just crop some cool-looking tattooed person's entire life and then put up a new profile where they pretend that he's a drug dealer or epic crime lord or porn star or whatever. And th this has already had some success and some popularity, but not from within the role-playing community, but from like 14-year-old girls. So to me, it's deeply fascinating when methods of role-playing are being taken over by new crowds, and now we learn from them and try to sort of, okay, how can we use your methodology without violating uh, privacy and so on? Because we have the rule that you have to use your own face because we do live events, so then it makes sense that you're playing the, the way you look, not, not somebody else. But yeah, that's just a yeah, short thing yeah. that Facebook role-playing already and, exists. And, so, yeah. and you know, and all the, everything's going in the right direction, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, geekdom is becoming more mainstream. Mm. That, that we're all becoming more connected. Uh, the technology for, for filming, videotaping, is, is becoming cheaper, more accessible, more intelligent, less, less uh, skill level required to get a decent uh, capture of, mm -hmm. of material, you know, due to 
the technology be more sensitive to low light situations and, and everything else, that everything is going in the right direction for uh, this to be an important phase of, of the development of this, of this hobby. Mm -hmm. So, all right, why don't we use this as a transition sure. and let's, let's do your, uh, your project first. Do Let me scoot down and give you a, a little room. Yeah, I can begin instead by talk, like, explaining, yeah. explaining a bit about how this, uh, this works. Um, so the Spiral is a, what is called a transmedia project. And the discipline of transmedia is basically telling a story on multiple different media formats. Some of them which are two-way and therefore interactive or possibly participatory. Uh, and this is sort of a fairly recent trend in media. I think it stems from the fact that uh, the sort of the moment of broadcast has lost some of its importance and regaining that through making events around the TV broadcast or making it possible for people to engage directly with a story. In our story here, uh, a bunch of artists uh, get radicalized after a police raid against their warehouse, against their, uh, which is their uh, artist commune. And they go on to make a bizarre street art stunt, uh, which is based on the stealing of six famous paintings uh, that they use to bait an online system, which is basically this map. And that's, this is where that game is going to be launched. So everybody can look for these paintings if they upload um, if they upload their own work, so they're trying to provoke people into doing street art and doing their own uh, video work and so on. So that's, that's the in-game reason why the game exists, and that is also how we're doing it online. So when it launches in 23 days, we will pretend that this is real. Uh, so it is a role-playing contract that you go in with a sort of assumption that it is real. And then on Facebook, the entire community exists. Um, and we launched this game by running a LARP in October in 2011 in Copenhagen, which was produced by, uh, in part uh, by uh, Odyssey with Bjarke over there, uh, where we took the five main actors uh, that are going to be in the TV series and 40 LARPers, and we put them in the same room for 72 hours and played a game that follows the story of the first episode. And we've shot the shit out of it from the inside with flip cams and iPhones and two documentary filmmakers who were in there doing professional work as well. So we have like 200 hours of footage from a game that is set in the universe of the story with the actors and LARPers. So as the game launches, these 40 LARPers are active online as their characters. So any audience member can go out and talk to people who are actually inside uh, the story of the TV show that they are watching. So that's the basic sort of ecology of the system. It has lots of flash games and challenges and so on that are not pure role playing. Um, but the role playing aspect is done here on, um, on Facebook. So there are two, two parts of it. Uh, there's the spiral, which is where you like, uh, we upload challenges. And the other one is uh, the personal role-playing community, which is the warehouse. So this is a trailer for a TV, for TV series. series. Yeah. Now, um, what, what's interesting is the actors in this TV series are also LARPers. And so the same actors, when they're not on set, a after the, the professional shooting is over, these actors stay and do LARPing scenarios, which are filmed at an amateur level, it's fair to say, uh, by crowdsourcing the video where the different LARPers carry their own cameras and capture each other on film during a LARP, and then these can be posted and added to. Yep. Is, that, is that fair? It is. Sure, some may find his work amusing, even thought-provoking. Media and everyone to be People who do work, their own work. But over the last 15 years, he has cost sanitation departments and museums around the EU more than 26 million euros. It's been an embarrassment for Europol and local law enforcement for years now. Six pieces of art. Six museums, six countries, and we're going to steal them. To be 
main question is, what's next? I'm in. Clock detectors. You're asking me to just give up myself. The deal's changed down now. I'm a cop, not an artist. There's been some robberies. What they did? Six. All within the last hour. All tagged with a spiral. The website, the spiral.eu, just went live. Yay. So, um, yeah, that's the, um, uh, yeah, the trailer for the show very much, but I think it, it sort of presents the basic scenario of it. You saw the, um, the place where they are planning the coup when they're throwing out the six, um, the six paintings. That's our LARP environment. That was where we were playing with those people in that space. So you can see us in the background as extras. So like the LARPers are there <laughs> physically present in the show as well to make integration easier. Um, and yeah, um, then let us go look at some of the, like, the deeper footage that it was regenerated by the series. Of course, this is very different. As you say, it's, it's um, hobby footage. Uh, but I think it can be, because there's a fair amount of footage out there of LARPs that show action and that show like battles or costumes or the surface parts of the role-playing discipline. There are very few that actually capture the acting or the sort of the characters of the games, which as we all know is the main takeaway, is the acting on characters and the deep immersion in them. So uh, that's what we, um, that, that's one thing that, that works um, a bit differently here. Because of course we have a story that is set in contemporary times, uh, and I hope that I'm still logged in here, but I might not be. Huh? Oh my God! Yeah, I hate those things. Are so hard to read. I have to now prove that I am a human being. Do you believe that I'm a human being? No. Yeah. <laughs> but then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ah, look, and they're now, uh, this is funny, they are now asking me to confirm my identity by identifying Anna Karin Linder, who is the, of course, the, the player, but I know it's Elvis Arvidsson because that's her character, and it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, and this is Peter Karlén, not at all more genial. So, um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is, of course, no, this is Art Onage. That's none of them. Yeah, okay, then it's played by... Tim Cassens? No, it's not played by Tim Cassens. You're confusing me. It's none of the above. I know this. Wow, but yeah. what a security system. Now that's Mara. But it's funny because it's like, we have now completely fooled Facebook that it, these people exist for real. Yeah, that's Sean Baptiste. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this is a bit of a, a more better demo than I thought <laughs> through, through just that. But so, yeah, uh, I mean, the, the, one of the reactions when we get when they show this, this footage is people have a really hard time uh, determining whether it's real or not. Uh, so these are all, yeah, these are all characters. And this is like all of, all of these uploads, that's ways for the players, the characters, to tell parts of their own story. Um, so, that, 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 that. Okay, yeah, um, do you want something intimate or something violent? Let's do something intimate, okay. Uh, so this is an in-game interview, uh, just to see how, how it, it can appear. Um, so yeah, I think the title sort of says it all also. Um, let's see, YouTube. 
And this footage is shot by a professional documentary filmmaker. He's now he's doing um, his yeah he's um, currently and this was uploaded yesterday I think. So uh, uh, and he's currently doing um, a story about the pirate bay. He's been following them during all their courts and so on. And he's working yes with a small uh, like HD system camera, shooting from the bear. So and the, which I think is a really really useful technique for shooting larks because it's light. It can go anywhere. And you can do, you use focus depth pulls and so on, which you will see a bit of here. This is from the game. Uh, this is in-game footage. Everything that we will show you is in-game footage, apart from the trailer. So, but, yeah. Uh, but, but, but that's what's really interesting. You watch this. I mean, it raises questions, too. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know if it's real or a game. I, mean, I know. But yeah. and, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so yes, again, if we can have some more volume, if that is possible, because I know that the volume is fairly weak on this one. Uh, okay, it's up there. Okay. Come again. You've been, you've been planning to die for a while? I've been planning to die for about nine months. Um, and I've, been begun, I've started planning this project uh, about two years ago. And uh, now it's nine months left as well, uh, until I'm going to be dead. So these are the different parts of my body, basically, which people have bought. So how much is your arm? All of it. It's about uh, 950,000 euros. I'm sold to different customers. My whole body is net worth 2.8 million euros at the moment. Okay. So how much, uh, how much do you weigh? They pay. So how much do you weigh? What's your body weight? Ah, it's about 70 kilos. How much, how much is a kilo of you? I'm not that fast in math. <laughs> What a kilo is? It's about, um, I was in my way, it's about, um, shit, it's about 40,000 euros for one, for one kilo of angle. So how many parts are you selling? I've sold almost everything actually. I have, uh, still have this pinky finger left and some parts of my foot and some internal organs as well. Uh, but most of the rest is actually already sold. How much is your pinky, dude? Huh? How much is your pinky? My pinky, this one you can buy it for 35,000 euros. Could you come down to maybe like 22? Yeah, if you bought half the left foot as well, perhaps. But I don't do the sales, I'm just the artist. Berg does the sales. We do a bit up here. Okay. Yeah, just something out around the neck, just keep my face yeah, out, yeah, I don't want to look beautiful. Okay. Are you selling parts of your face as well? Is it sold? No, no, my face is actually is going to be delivered to my family. I'm, ke I'm keeping the head. The whole head? Yeah. The cranium, I'm going to get buried in it. Just with, almost just with my cranium. And uh, the rest of uh, the face is up to my family to decide what they want to do with it. Great. Where, where, you, where does your family think of this idea? They uh, don't really like it, actually. But um, it's my body and it's my life. Are you going to miss you? They probably are. Are you sentimental? Huh? Are you sentimental about it? Yeah, my dad's not really talking to me, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> my brother's in jail and he doesn't really care either, so this is gonna go good. I think the uh, what I'm trying to prove with this is that we we think that we we as a people and we as individuals can decide whatever we want to do with ourselves, what we want to do with our life, and we can just do whatever we want to. And we think that because we want to think that. But actually, and it's, it's all just a big fucking lie, and everybody knows this. But the only thing that you really have power over is life and death for yourself. That that's basically the only thing you can control, whether you live or die. So I'm trying to prove that the value of art is is the same thing as the value of human lives. And nowadays, the value of human lives is, is money. Who's going to get the money to your to your I'm going to use the money. I'm, I'm, uh, I've started using it already, pretty fucking nice. Uh, and the uh, trip, of course, is going to cost me a lot. Just get into Afghanistan and get to a, the war zone. You're not really too... It's not like there's tourist trips there, really. And uh, then the rest of the money will go to some friends of mine. Yeah? Yeah. Are we done? I think we should... Um, so, so, so let me see if I understand this right. He is an artist on the TV series, and then he's LARPing here to create more depth for his character. 
Yeah, I mean, as... he, he exists as, um, I mean, I think you, I usually compare the, the characters around the main characters to sort of, you know, the, the aliens in Mos Eisley Cantina that are in the background that give the setting and so on. Sure. He is one of those people. So right. He's in the background of the series, but he, is, he becomes our link to the main characters. We see him together with the characters, we can meet him, and we can go really, really deep into his ideology or... Um, or Vatanen's ideology. And, and, so and his personal story arc is yeah. to go to Afghanistan and get himself blown up yeah. and sell yeah. off his and body sell, parts. And sell the body parts. So, I mean, he's it. And, and a lot so of the characters. a little bit edgy here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, of yeah. course. I mean, a lot of these characters are extreme, uh, like extreme images of, uh, of modern art. It's like, how far can you go in the pursuit of fame, in the pursuit of like yourself as an investment object and so on? It's all about. It, it is a. The, when I came aboard to the project, it's clear that, okay, this is going to be a story about contemporary art and the va what, what is the value of investment art as compared to art that you do yourself. Um, that's why we're working with trying to get people to do their own work uh, instead of seeing themselves as career artists. It's, it's, um, it's sort of the opposition between career arts and arts for beauty and changing the world. Uh, that's the basic story. And you can just deep dive very, very deeply into that. Um, and yeah. Cool. Um, this is um, so. Yeah, and that's an example of what it looks like when you have, when you go toe to toe with a character. Um, and I think almost every single player, at some point, pulls out performances like that that are fairly believable and fairly interesting, uh, and. But it, not at all something to be sort of ash the camera should be ashamed of, because we usually we have that image that if we film LARPing or if we film ourselves in character, it's going to look like shit and it's not going to feel real or so on. But I think that parts of this material I think sort of proves that if you have, if you're removed from that character, if you don't know Hampus Album, who is by the way like a battle fantasy LARPer from Sweden, uh, if you don't know him. Uh, and don't know his personal mannerisms and so on, you, would, you sort of won't notice that it's, that it's fake. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's one aesthetic. That's the found footage aesthetic. Um, so yeah, I think that's a little bit on that, and we can move to uh, looking at something uh, from a different perspective. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. I, I mean, I, I think that's really interesting. I, I don't know if anybody has any questions for Martin before we go on to uh, another example of this. It would be fun, and yeah, um, of course, check it out as well at some point because there's too much to show uh, in any uh, in this sort of format at all. So yeah. let's go in there and dig into it. Yeah. So how do you see this feeding back into more uh, the kind of work most people uh, are doing as opposed yep. to something that has television value? Yep. I think first, I think that. Um, the choice, of course, is like we, we, this is a mainstream TV series uh, and the Euro thriller, so it's not a genre piece. And that's one thing that I think this entire concept would be more easily accessible uh, for this crowd, which is really one of the crowds that is targeting, if it did have sort of a genre component, if it was a modern horror show or uh, urban fantasy show or whatever. I think that. Uh, it's one thing that, that would work, work better. And I think the interest is going to come from both sides. Um, I mean, if these things start to work out a little bit, there will be interest from broadcasters to turn a LARP campaign into a TV series and work very, very early uh, with doing proper integration. This, of course, we have been working since three years of integrating this with a, with a live action role-playing campaign. But as you say, it doesn't come from the community. It comes from above and uses uh, or like, connects to the community. So that's, we could call that approach sort of top side down. Whereas another way with lifting an existing and powerful and working uh, game, like say, Just a Little Loving, if you want to do something that is very serious and very mainstream, which is a ga game about HIV in the 80s, that I think would work spectacularly well. Uh, if it was like filmed in the right way and so on, or a like any of the long-running uh, like urban fantasy campaign, like the troll games here in Helsinki, I think could be lifted into m turning that into a TV series and co continuing the campaign and keeping it true. Uh, so I, th I think that there has to be a few successful examples before uh, you can lift properties that are built by the community. Uh, to that level. And then there's, of course, there's a possibility of just doing it gung-ho, as we 
are doing documentations for trading experience with each other. And that's more along the lines of the skate videos. Then it's for us to see, okay, this was actually what this game looked like. It's not only a like, word of mouth or a couple of pictures, but this was how it felt, this was how it looked. Um, so that, I think it's, it's a twofold mystery. <laughs> One is trying to turn broadcasters and big media onto the idea of doing it. Uh, and the other is showing through just uh, grassroots works, and, and then good footage starts to appear from that direction. I think both need to be done simultaneously. It's not one or the other. Um, in a limited way, uh, there's, we would like to have done mu much more of that. We had the concept of what we call donut holes, which is in the series you prepare a space in the script where you say, enter game material here. Uh, and that can be sort of the easiest way to do it, of course, on all the characters, uh, laptop screens or so on. You green screen that and then you enter the content later because then you can shoot the whole thing and then you inject some parts. So the end event, for instance, will be edited in two days after the end event and be spliced into it. So the ending is, entire, is, is up to the audience and the players. They will be filmed there with the characters at the end. So we're saving that. That's the big chunk. Uh, yeah. In a very limited sense, they can, they, the hunt for the paintings is our, it's like, it, this is a keep it simple project. So what you can do as a, an outside player is find those paintings. That's what you're hunting for. Uh, so, and all the other things, like talking to characters and so on, that will give you clues to be able to find the paintings more efficiently. Uh, so there is that. So when the different paintings are found, yes, that will be affected by how well the players play. It's a, it's a straight up competition game. Only six people can find those paintings, and it might be one of you guys. So yeah. All right. Martin, you're a lifesaver covering for me here while I was getting no my problems. technology sorted out. This is great. Tag, tag team with you anytime. <laughs> um, okay, so I'd like to introduce uh, the project I'm doing, which is, um, uh, again, it's, it's bringing role playing or LARPing into media, but in a, in a very dramatically different way, which I think just illustrates the possibilities of, a, of, a, of attacking this opportunity in multiple ways. So I'm launching a, a web series called The First Paladin in um, a couple of weeks. And um, uh, what this is a fantasy world, uh, it basically publishing a fantasy world, if you will, and developing the storyline through role playing. Um, that, so far that's not unique, it's been done with, um, I hit it with my axe, it's probably the, the best example, um, at least the longest running example of a role playing game where they filmed a role-playing game uh, and edited it and posted bits of it. Also, Will Wheaton has, uh, with his tabletop series, has started uh, publishing. If you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend taking a look at, uh, at tabletop uh, mm. web series. He just recently did Fiasco, mm. uh, which is, um, you know, it's fairly, that's not really a mainstream role-playing game. That's a you know, uh, but it's an excellent story game. So I was quite impressed that he went that deep into the hobby, if you will. So uh, first Paladin is uh, Fantasy Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I've done doing it with a uh, license from uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, using the D and D Next rules. And what you see is there's a basically now this is. Um, this is just an early graphic. The website's not up yet, so it's not really complete yet with all the bells and whistles. I'm just showing you a sort of a preliminary uh, a sketch of what the website will, will look like, uh, wireframes. And you see at the top, there's a series of eight video slots that represent eight uh, scenes, if you will, from the first episode. And we're going to launch with four scenes, and, uh, and, and it jumps right into the action. One of the things I'm experimenting with is what, what can we do to, I mean, l let's face it. <laughs> Role-playing games can sometimes be boring to play. They're even more boring to watch. 
Okay, so what, it, it, we may be crazy. It may be that a role-playing game is just like there's nothing you could do to make it interesting. But, boy, we're going to try really hard to make it interesting and, and do everything we can. So we're going to uh, – uh, and we may have made a mistake right off the bat by not getting dynamic enough people. I don't, I don't know. But um, we're, um, uh, we just started with myself GMing. And I, I don't consider myself a great GM, but I, I, I mean, I think I'll do okay. But uh, I probably need a real – a role orator uh actor and and so on uh and then we edit out you know edit out all the crap right because at least two-thirds of every game session is just crap and and then we illustrate it with uh uh you know just you know uh hired a professional artist to draw pictures of all the characters and so on well add in some some music during uh key elements and uh, maps and 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 all this sort of stuff bring in guests to, to run as, as characters, uh, to, to visit and play like an NPC. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's kind of what's, what's going on here. And then, and, and then, of course, really focus on the story because nobody wants to see a bunch of people rolling dice and moving miniatures around too much. So it, it is almost entirely di- a dialogue sort of, sort of game. And, uh, so, and also to make it even easier, it's like, uh, any one of these episodes, you, you'll be able to, in the, when it launches, there'll be a button below it you can clip where you can just say, just tell me what happens, right? <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to follow along the storyline, but uh, you don't want to watch every single minute of every episode, you can kind of get the, the synopsis of it. And so, uh, but the story unfolds according to the actions of the player characters and the world then develops. So the players are... It, it is creating, like what we would expect in a role-playing game, it is creating a role-playing uh, story uh, through the actions of, of those characters. And so this is kind of how the website would be laid out. And I have a little bit of a, of a trailer teaser, kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. Now, I'm going to see if I can hold the mic up to this. And... Okay. Where is the speaker on this Can't you just take nah. it? Oh, there it is. You can hear can you hear that? No. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm, we're trying to fix so that there's some speakers there at all. Uh uh maybe we should go down the tech test. That's it. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, okay, very good. Okay, well, it gives you a visual idea. That's okay. No, don't worry. It'll give you a visual idea of, of, uh, of how, how this is. I mean, you get, you get what's going on here. So it's, it's, uh, we set up a nice uh, stage, if you will, to play the game in, in terms of where we film. Uh, the players put some work into sort of the production values of uh, the lighting, uh, make sure that we have a good sound. If you could hear it, you would realize it is good sound. Uh, and we just film these games, and we film it with uh, three cameras. Uh, and the way we do is we set up the table in kind of uh, an L shape like this. And the cam- imagine a stage line like this with three cameras pointed uh, at the table. Because it's kind of like filming a reality show in the sense that in a reality show they always use multiple cameras because they never really know who's going to say it's unscripted. And this is what you're doing with the LARPs, is you never know who's going to say something interesting at which point in time. So you need multiple cameras to capture the, uh, the action. So what we do is um, we, we film the game with three cameras, take it back and, and edit uh, back and forth between those cameras. And uh, that's... That's kind of how it works. We've uh, created some illustrations for, uh, for this, like the map of York, um, all the different player characters, and basic, basic idea. Mm-hmm. So this launches in about two weeks, um, and uh, it's a fairly, I think it's a fairly straightforward idea, but we've put some good time in it, and I encourage you to come and check it out. But, um, you, you also mentioned that this is a part of the sort of the transparent design process for 5th edition. 
as well. Yes. So you're experimenting with rule systems and so on that that's might right. be a part of uh, that, the system then to open it up for the community to comment upon and so on. Yep, that's Which right. is cool. So it's also part of a living process. It's not just... Um, not only this, but it's tied to that process yes. as well. Cool. Yes, 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 exactly. Um, and I think the part of this that I, I think is really particularly interesting is that, um, uh, is that I'm also uh, in film school right now, so I am creating narrative films, like, you know, like scripted short films, where you, you, based on what's happening in the role-playing series. And the first one, we just finished Principal Photography, of a, of a battle between uh, two families, and uh, and so it's uh, and we filmed it actually on film because I did this as a film school project. So we mm -hmm. filmed you know the old, the old kind of film that you take and get developed. <laughs> you know everybody asked me how did it turn out. Well, for a long time I couldn't tell you because it was being developed. Right? It's not like you could look at the viewfinder and find out. So uh, we've been doing um, uh, playing around with doing narrative films, short stories based on. Uh, the action that's happening in the role-playing game, yep. and uh, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, any questions about that? Yeah. Uh, regarding the first paladin, uh, is there kind of a business idea, or is it a hobby project? Or oh, uh, I'm doing this purely as a hobby. Yeah. Um, oh, we can go back to, go back to this number one. Um, it's uh, if it. If it's, it'll create a fantasy world, so there certainly will be the opportunity to monetize it later uh, if, um, uh, if it's popular. I, I see it more as an experiment, like, like really trying to take something and, and doing it as, as well as I can and seeing what I learn from that. And I, my expectation is that I'll end up coming back to the idea, but coming up with a different sort of implementation. Um, in, in the future, so. Uh, mm, mm, you think of something else you want to show? Yeah, I think there's, uh, yeah, I mean, the, we can sit here and have okay. a YouTube party all night looking at awesome LARP vids, but yeah, uh, sure. yeah, let's. Uh, I, I like, I mean, you just cast your friends because I, I don't know if you intentionally made something completely revolutionary, which is a film intending to, to show the awesomeness of role playing where you didn't cast the players as really young, beautiful people. Everybody's older than me. Well, it's actually a woman, and there's a non-white player. Which, actually, you know, which is fantastic. I am so grateful and mind-blowing if you do that on purpose. Uh, it was just my friends, yeah. Uh, that, that's my gaming group. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it was, uh, uh, well, two of the people, Steve Connor and, and CJ, the non-white person, we, we call him a black guy, uh, <laughs> Uh, I went to college with, yeah, I, uh, Steve and CJ and I all went to college together and met, started playing in, in Chaldea, my, my D&D campaign. Uh, I started running it and they were playing it uh, starting back in 1981. So that's, uh, that's why we're all old looking because we are old. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Adrienne used to be the national sales manager at Wizard of the Coast back in the mid 90s and Adrienne, the woman, she is the CEO of Gen Con. So she's the gal that runs, the, the woman, cool. I should say, who runs Gen Con uh, for me. I mean, she's my business partner uh, with the Gen Con business. And then uh, the other guy, uh, Mike Boozer, is, uh, well, he's a great guy. <laughs> and and he, he joined, uh, he started playing with us in the early 2000s. But I, I, I guess <laughs> I'm hesitant to say, well, okay, he's gay. So, I mean, it's great. I mean, we have a really nice, diverse <laughs> group, you know. <laughs> I was say, should I say that? Well, yeah, that's yeah. the point of this. I mean, it, it's just, a, this is just our gaming group. And yeah, but, it's, I mean, that, that's how gaming groups look. They are wonderful yeah. collections of eclectic people. And it's really yeah. nice not streamlining that and trying to make it into something it's not. I think that's really, it's a... It's a cool move. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, for a comment that a question. Uh, I think it was kind of interesting because it, it really looked a lot like reality TV in a good way. You know, mm -hmm. it, in the sense of, you know, it's like real people doing real stuff and, and you can, even without sound, you can see that they're doing something that's really interesting. And you're like, oh, yeah, I don't want to hear what they're saying because they look like they're in sound. I have to say, I'm really surprised yeah. that it looks that, that good. I mean, 
I mean, you said the production values are good. I mean, they're good compared to something, but obviously they are not com good compared to, say, World Series of Poker. But if you put that amount of lighting and setting up and stuff like that, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is some, a bit of a surprise to the both of us that, I mean, yes, people do look, I mean, like they are genuine and they are really there. It's not, it doesn't look whimsical or so on. Even though comedy, I think, could be what makes it work, I mean, for a big audience. Yeah. Is that because there's always like D and D comedy, uh, that genre, I mean, there's so many web shows out there and so on. And, and then I think it sort of works when it gets hilarious around the table because everybody has those hilarious moments around the table. So, so that might even work better than drama. And um, we'll see. Yeah. And, well, and in fact, we have. Uh, well, is there something else you want to show before we jump to that? We're actually going to try this live tonight. Yep. Uh, this is a two hour event. And uh, we're only halfway through. And what we're going to do next is we're going to. Uh, if, if, if all the technology challenges haven't daunted us so far, we're just going to keep pressing on this. Uh, and since you've been so patient with us, and we're going to do a live role-playing event here and film it and edit it. And um, maybe the Robocon people would be like to uh, post it later if it turns out any good. <laughs> but, but that'll be up to you because it'll be... Uh, what do you think? Are you guys up for that? You up for it? Oh, come on, come yeah. on, come on. Come on. Yeah. yeah you up yeah, for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. But did, did you have something else you want to say before we do that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I just like to, uh, I think it, there should be a third person in this panel, and if there's anyone, it would be Brody Condon. Uh, Bjarke has worked a lot with him, and he's a career yeah. artist from New York. And he, the thing he does is just like, just to briefly give it a, a third viewpoint on this, is that he does as video installation work, he shoots LARPs and sells them to, or, and, and does them a solo exhibition and, uh, as, at museums. And he flew over. Really? Yeah, he flew over 12 uh, Nordic LARPers uh, to his game. Uh, like, what is it, half a year ago, like three, four months ago. Uh, and it's now launching uh, in a museum. And it's like, this is what it looks like. Um, because this is, this is high art taking on uh, role-playing Aesthetics and, and by the to way, produce the, a piece, and the, I think just yes, think it's it's mind-boggling and fascinating that this is happening right now. And then this is a lesson, by the way, in, in how you learn something is you volunteer to run a panel on it, and somebody yeah. comes up and shows you in the middle of the panel, like, "What? Well, hey, this is how it's going. Well, go ahead, let's, yeah, let's yeah, see this." It. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did we unplug the sound earlier? <laughs> Um, I don't know if sound is so meaningful here because he is not working with, uh, with it as, I mean, I'm working as a sort of to tell dramatic stories or go deeper into characters and th then it's really important to hear what people are saying. Um, also for you, but for him, it's the imagery. Uh, that's a big takeaway from him. Yeah. Oh, and that is me getting violated. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -mm -mm. You guys hearing that? It, the sound is not that important. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the cinematography is great. And this, I think, I think is his uh, third foray into uh, filming live action role playing games. Uh, there's on his uh, Vimeo, there's uh, some other things. Uh, one sort of semi fantasy game in Arnhem, and one this like hardcore psychological, horrible therapy sessions, uh, which was done in San Diego, no? In LA? In Los Angeles. In Los Angeles. Yeah. 
So that's been touring. It's called Level Five, and it's Bjarke is the guy to talk about uh, talk to about this stuff uh, because he is, is most deeply into into this. So yeah, just yes, yes to say that that LARP documentation is hitting a lot of different, or like role playing documentation is hitting off in a lot of different scenes at the same time. Well, yeah. You know what this begins to look like? It looks, it's starting to approach the quality of a narrative film, but in a reality show, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> we always have to add that whenever we mention yeah. reality show. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah. Uh, but, we all, but I use that because we all know what a reality show is. We all know, we've seen it. it mm -hmm. it's, it's, we know it's not totally unscripted. We know that there's a plot line that, that they're um, manipulating in the background, but mm -hmm. the dialogue is unscripted. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a LARP, right? I mean, you, people are, there's, there is this story arc in the background. Mm -hmm. There's GMs, producers, yep. uh, that are controlling it. But the players are playing their characters and, and saying what they want to say. Yeah. And then you add to it a very fine level of cinematography on top of it. And there's amazing possibilities for what yeah. can be produced there. Yeah, two examples of how role-playing methods have been used in reality TV is So You Want to Be a Superhero and uh, The Colony. Uh, both of them have role-taking or world aspects that are changed. In the colony, everybody plays themselves, but they assume that civilization has ended and they have to survive after the apocalypse. And they get, have game master characters thrown at them as raiders and so on. And they, are, they, they do perform believing that they are in that situation. So it's already some experiments are happening, but they are making mistakes that we could help them avoid. I mean, those shows would be a thousand times better if they had used, people are used to designing role-playing games as a part of the, pro, uh, of the process. Yeah. And yeah. All right. Yes, let's do it. So let's, uh, we're going to do something uh, uh, a little different here. And um, uh, this is going to be a, a, an, a, a, an audience participation uh, for a role-playing uh, situation. Now, see my, my lovely girlfriend is up there with a, a camera and uh, wave, to the, wave to the audience. And uh, she is going to film uh, us, film a few volunteers from the audience who will come up and play out a scenario according to, uh, to how we um, uh, ask them to. And then we'll see, what we can, see if what we can produce from this is entertaining to watch. And, and I'm kind of flying. This is something I haven't tried before. <laughs> There's a lot of that. <laughs> well, at least from my side on this panel. Um, so uh, for this... Uh, we have three scenarios that uh, I think we have time to do at least a couple of, maybe all three. And uh, for this first one, we need two men and two women who would like to volunteer to do role playing uh, on a live. We got one. All right, come on down. Hey, three more. Come on. Uh, is this a shy group? Yeah. Here we go. Super. One more. There's two more. Yeah. 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 We got. Uh, we got a couple guys. We got a couple girls. Don't worry, we're not going to make you kiss each other or anything. Oh, I see. It's, I, I start. Yes. Start, start ratcheting up the uh, the pressure. Yep. Um, come on, let's see. come on, come on. Roll Anyone? Roll. You want to come? Go. Yay! They see it works. <laughs> okay, one more. I I no. love the, the the nervousness. Anyone? Here. Yep. All right, so. Uh, so you, you get to be a, a, a woman in this thing. That's okay. You're, you're, yep. you're, no, no problem. Yep. Um, okay, so this uh, uh, scene is called Love is Blind. And what I need uh, from the audience now is to help me fill out this, uh, this form. Now, if you ever played Mad Libs, anybody play Mad Libs as a kid? There's a couple of people. So we're going to design in sort of a Mad Libs format a little role-playing uh, scenario. So first of all, I need a god from mythology. Yeah. Loki. Loki. Okay. Mm -hmm. Loki. Uh, an intelligent... Beholder. No, that can talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I did the same thing. I did the beholder mistake as well. What's that? Atyug? Atyug, yeah. Atyug, can they talk? Yeah, common. They talk? Atyugs talk <laughs> common. Okay. <laughs> Atyug. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then we need a D&D player character race. No. Okay, no, good. I like that. And a D&D class? Bard. Bard. <laughs> and another D&D race? Gold. What? Gold. 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 Gold.
Dwarf. Dwarf. Okay. Dwarf. And a common mundane occupation. Dirt farmer. What? Dirt farmer. Dirt. Dirt farmer. Okay, let's see here. Dirt farmer. All right, so let's see here. Uh, we will have a, a little casting. You want to do casting? Here, I sure. will. I will. Uh, you, you can. You can. You can cast, and I will. Now let us reveal yep. the scenario here. Uh, the scenario here is a young priestess of Loki. Oops, let's um, yep. uh, so they can all read it. Uh, can you read it? A young priestess of Loki brings. And that is you. You're the young priestess of Loki. Yep. An Otu. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's you're the Otug. <laughs> Yeah. To meet her parents. Or so who is most into Otyug lore here? You know, the, the, the ones that, that do the service of the dungeons, they eat refuse, and they're sort of they are really part, important part of the ecosystem of uh, like Underdeep and so on. But it, anybody sort of feel an aff affection to the Otyug race? <laughs> How about, uh, okay, go for it. You're the Otyug. Yep. Okay. Okay, you can fake it. It's okay. Yep. It, it's You're a, a dirt-eating monster. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one has gotten out of the dungeon, obviously. Yep. Um, okay, Mom is a 15th level gnome bard. Yep, and <laughs> okay. that is you. Okay. You're the 15th level gnome bard. Mom? Yep. Uh, yeah. Dad is a dwarf dirt farmer. <laughs> and ergo, the young priestess is half gnome and half dwarf. Uh, the scene, mom and dad are, and we're going to have you come and sit here, and uh, Martin and I are going to get out of the way, so you, you yep. can use the mics, and so we can get a good sound on this. There's one thing we've learned is that we need good sound here. Okay, so we need one more chair. And this is the dinner table. You can do a sort of a semi-circle, I think it's that. Or if you want to use, yeah, use the mics. Yeah, Just yeah. Sit down at the, Traditionally one-sided um, gnome. Okay, so who are the parents? Who are the parents? Yeah. You two are the parents. Okay, you two are going to start start sitting down. Go ahead, and sit right here. Okay. <laughs> mom and dad. Everybody get around for applause for mom and dad here. Be good sports. Okay. Uh, you come close enough that you have the mics here. And yeah, uh, the scene's going to start with. Uh, Daughter coming home with her new date, and uh, and they're just gonna role play. So, anybody got a doorbell sound? Ding dong. Thank you. <laughs> oh, let's see what the cat brought in. Okay, I will go there. Sorry, Daddy, I didn't remember that. You're getting slightly old. Let's play the light mic so we can get this yeah. out. Okay, my lovely daughter, come here and give me some sugar. <laughs> I hate this. When they, when they do much. Oh, come on, Daddy. You know how much I love you, too. But... You know the thing where I went away to college and became a priestess? Yeah. Well, things kind of happen and I kind of need to introduce you to someone. Yeah, it's okay to bring a new pet to our <laughs> house. <laughs> Have you been delving in dungeons, my darling? A little bit, perhaps. But my dear, I'm nervous. They look like the kind of kinds of adventurers that always come to my dungeon and kill my friends. Oh, don't worry, they only want to kill your friends, not you. I hope, my darling, you only undid uh, traps. Well, I did leave a couple for you if you want to go back. Ooh. I saw there was another quite handsome one, but I preferred this one. So, Daddy, can I keep it? <laughs> Does it eat much? Well, um, depends on how many adventurers have died in the dungeon lately. We have lots of dirt. Dirt? <laughs> I like dirt. That's good. Great. <laughs> what is your name, anyway? Um, it's... <laughs> 
I understand it's a little hard to pronounce in human language. Did you say <laughs> uh, No. <laughs> the stress is on the second syllable. <laughs> oh, oh, honey, I thought that was the penultimate syllable. <laughs> right, right. I'm not so sure about this. I will tinker a machine to pronounce it completely. Would you make me a copy? Absolutely, my darling. Okay, so hopefully we broke the ice and we have no problem getting more recruits. Doesn't this look so? Doesn't this look fun? Yes. Yes, okay, good. That was the right answer. All right, very good. Okay, let's do one more. Okay. Next scenario is called, how can you say no? We need uh, ideally two men, two, two women, and one more of either. All right, volunteers, come on, this is fun. Come on up. Yep, here's one, all right. Yep, there's two. Yep. The, no, you can't volunteer, you gotta run the camera. Three. Okay, get a couple girls. Uh, the girls usually want to be on camera the most. Any girls want to come back? <laughs> come on, get down here. Uh, okay. Oh, what a good sport. All right, thank you. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So the idea is... This is terrifying. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. I didn't let you off the hook. I still need one more woman. <laughs> oh. Uh, maybe you should switch places, actually. This, we got one more to go. <laughs> okay, so while they stand here nervously wondering what this is going to be about, we'll uh, move on to the audience participation. Um, okay, first give me a sexual orientation. Straight, gay, or lesbian? Bye. Fine. Okay. Yep. Great. That's fine. Uh, good D and D race. Not like really often to play, but like good alignment typically. Uh, Halfling. Halfling. Okay. Sure. Uh, an evil D and D race. Oh, Did you catch one of those? I think it's drow. Drow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, a a guild one might find in a fantasy world. Bizarre. A wizard's guild. And a pet. Owlbear. A pet owlbear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, now we will, uh, let's see, let's scroll up a little bit here and make this bigger. That probably would have helped. Um, unhide. All right. A bisexual halfling couple are trying to adopt a halfling child, hoping to ease the challenges of adopting an older uh, child. The local child psychologist recommended buying a pet, so they bought an owlbear. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was a mix-up at the adoption agency, and instead of a halfling, they got a drow. Okay, so we need to have the bi. Uh, halfling parents. Um, yep. yep. You two. Yeah. You two. Yep. All right. So you two uh, will go ahead and have a seat here. And you want to be the mom are, or the dad? Uh, seat for this. <laughs> Maybe and, it's easier. Or the dom or the sub. Who's going to play the owl? Oh, yeah, exactly. uh, owl bear. I can or, be the sub. Who's going to play? Actually, scoot down one. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just scoot down one. Okay. Yep. And who would need an owl? Bear? Who do? Albert, right here. Yes. There you go. Um, if you decide you, you would be more effective standing up and pantomiming instead of doing dialogue, that works too. Uh, I think that's like one of the few poses that Albert's do. <laughs> yeah. You can move around on the stage. It's not right now. We'll start there. Okay. Uh, the scene is. Uh, so, uh, okay, so. One of you is the drow, one of you is the adoption agent. Which one do you want to be? I'd rather be the agent. Okay, I can be the child. 
Okay, okay you're in the show. Give me a pipe, Okay, the brown child and the agents. Okay, so, um, now you, uh, of course, do not want to leave without, uh, yeah. you, you, with the child. Yeah. Obviously, there has to be no reason. Yeah, and you really have your heart set on getting a cute little halfling child. So, to play with the owlbear. <laughs> <laughs> For as somebody who belongs to a later gamer generation, what does a drow look like? Oh, I, I know it's like, bad news. They're like elves with black skin and white hair, and they're generally evil. Okay. But they're Thank always you. evil, except Dritz. I know yeah. their reputation, I just don't know their yeah. face. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, got a the doorbell? There you go. There we go. All right. Ooh, I wonder if that's the ad okay. adoption agents. Would you, would you go and look? Yes. No, yes, no, dear. No, down! Down! Down, bear! Down, old bear! Down! Fluffy. That, that's a bad fluffy. <laughs> what? Oh, hello. Uh, I'm from the agency. Uh, you... Fluffy. Fluffy, no! Fluffy, no! Fluffy. no. Oh, nope. Oh, my. Yeah, sit down now. Okay. Make your point. Now let's... Down, are, you really? sure, are you sure there hasn't been some kind of a mix-up? Um, she, you are looks, the ones you, you wanted to adopt a child. Or, she looks yes. a bit dark for a halfling. We've done the process. Yes. We've done the interviews. I don't understand why you come back. We filed all oh, the paperwork. We, uh, we have come back to bring you this lovely, lovely girl that is looking for loving, caring What's, what's wrong with her feet? What's wrong with her feet? There's no hair on them. Uh, so is your it's feet too. Uh, is there a, do you have any healing potions? <laughs> Sorry, I, I might have one just over it's here. It's not very dangerous. It's just a cure light wounds potion though. Well, it'll, it helps. It's a, it's a low level monster. Uh, Actually, it's not. Fluffy? Down, Fluffy. Fluffy down. Yes. Okay, it's back in the box with you. Yes. Well, uh, back in the box. Yes. Yes, well, I understand that it is always shocked. You know, you have built this dream image of your perfect child, and you must understand that that every child, especially, well, some childs have some special needs. And this child is taller than me. <laughs> well, yes, but, and she's looking at me funny. Yes, well, that is, that's and why does she have a knife? She has very good genes. She I suspect there would be problems with authority in this household if a child was taller than the mother. I'm a very well, good as We strongly recommend using only verbal uh, um, authoritarian means anyway, so don't do that. <laughs> You know, honey, I guess we could consider adopting this this child, because, I mean, I know that most, most drow are pretty evil, but, you know, you remember Drizzt, right? Me too. I mean, he was a dark... Fluffy! Fluffy, no! Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for you to start backstabbing everyone. It would be sort of when the owl bears away. <laughs> Shank him. Yep. Okay, we, we got one more. We saved the best for last. So uh, if uh, for this next one, we need uh, uh, four people, ideally uh, with at least one of each gender, but the other, after that, it doesn't matter. Okay, a couple of volunteers. This looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> And fun. That's fun to watch. Hmm. So come on. Hmm. Got yeah. That? Yeah. All right. There we go. Someone's. Okay. We got two. Yay. Excellent. And we. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. And we've satisfied our gender roles. So any two. Yes. Here we go. There's one. Last yep. chance. Yeah. Okay. Last one we're come on. Do. There yeah. we go. All right. I'm starting to worry. Perfect. I, I don't know God, about you, yep. but this is, I'm having fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one is... Oh, whoops, I forgot to uh, hide this. I'm glad I checked before I scrolled down. 
because it's more fun that way. Um, okay, whoops. I want to. I was testing this out here, and uh, uh, clear contents. Okay, before anybody sees, probably didn't go fast enough. Okay, so the first uh, one is a famous science fiction or fantasy character from a movie. Willow. Willow. <laughs> Excellent. A clan from Vampire the Masquerade. Valkavian. Right? Valkavian. Did I say that right? Oh, no, sorry, Malcavian. Malcavian. There. Now, that, that sounds familiar. Uh, a modern day uh, Danish. Swedish. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> Swedish. Yeah. No, okay. oh, no you're, do wait, Swedish. You're yeah. Swedish, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a straight laced job in modern day Finland. No. Engineer. Engineer. <laughs> um, All right. Okay. I, I just realized that I, I did something chancy in this that, you know, sometimes when you type an email, you shouldn't, and then later, you're intending to delete it. <laughs> um, I'm, I hope I don't offend anyone with this. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> <laughs> do it, just do it. Don't think about it. <laughs> it's only going to hurt for a little bit. <laughs> okay. A, a Finnish couple are missing their daughter. They are simple fans. <laughs> <laughs> Timon explained to me uh, some of the political environment of Finland. So, um, uh, dad is an engineer, mom is Swedish. <laughs> they learn that their daughter has run off to a, attend a convention called Ropacon. They have come to Ropacon, determined to bring her back. After getting their badges and dealing with the shock, they track their daughter down to the goth fantasy, fully immersive LARP. But they are denied entrance to the LARP by Willow and a vampire of the Malkavian clan because they are not in costume. <laughs> so, uh, the scene is outside the doors. Uh, the door is decorated with a dark and sensual poster announcing the LARP. From the other side of the door, you hear goth music and the occasional scream. Uh, the Finnish couple want to get in. Willow Malkavian have strict orders to only let in costumed people. Okay, so you get to be Willow, right? Willow's a female character, right? No. No. I mean, oh, if it depends if it's Willow from Buffy or if it's Willow from oh. Willow, the, or the, the, the oh. fantasy, the George Lucas fantasy. Yeah, the movie Willow. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Well, you're casting. You're, you're casting. Yeah, yeah. Let's go for the Malkavian. So, yeah. You're, you're, uh, you're Willow, Willow, the pseudo Frodo character from the rip off Lord of the Rings wannabe movie by George Lucas from the 80s. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, oh, this was the female role was mom, but that's okay. You can be mom. Um, <laughs> there we go. And uh, and dad, the engineer. Okay. And uh, I bet you're queuing up some uh, some mood music, aren't you? Yes. Oh my God! And you did it. You did it. All right. Okay. So we have some mood music coming online here. I will see. Yeah, we'll see if it doesn't work. But yeah. Well, if it's kind of quiet, it's probably good. Doesn't thing. matter. Yep. <laughs> All right, so uh, why don't we start with you guys seated, and uh, so you two here, you two here, and uh, um, we'll, we'll start that way. Okay, so uh, this obviously mundane couple has <clears throat> just approached the fully immersive LARP intros, and uh, probably acting like they think they can get in. Who uh, might you be? Wait! Thy will not enter. My daughter is in there. I need to get in. We and will get not her. care about that. Why? You will not enter. You, you have no, you are obviously, you are not accustomed to our ways. We, we are here to find our daughter. We can do introduce juice them our ways. We can pour this water over you, for instance, and then you will. Hawk and monster. <laughs> do not scare them away. They just need beautiful costumes. For the party. Costumes. What costumes? I bought this uh, great uh, shirt at Stockman. Can, I don't need any costumes. We can reach their costumes. We can rip all their clothing out of them and then we can eat them. What? 
What? We, we do not eat the guests. What, what, no, what, did, the what, what did she we, say? We can eat the, the clothing. Yeah, in the, the, in the kiva. <laughs> These people I, 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 scare I, I, me. <laughs> Get away from me, monster! They, I think they are very crazy. I'm sure it will no, work, we are good because then they are man. properly costumed. Now because listen, they're... younglings. I will get in, or I will take out my knife. <laughs> Just I have a pure my heart. My granddad you gave will me this not, knife. You will not conquer my pure heart. I will... I, I will ask my friends to help us. Uh, I will ask all of them. They will come. Just, 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 just give, give us all daughter back. Yes, the children of the night will come after you. Yes, they will what? all come. What? Who? I think they're threatening us. What? They're it will be us. I think blood, so too. A blood all over us. Shall we call police? It, it will be really nice. Now listen, younglings. We will get in with or without your help. With or but, without clothing, well, you mean? We are really willing to help if, if you're willing to take on costumes. Or without any costumes also. We can paint you with blood. Uh, uh, five stars, uh, these big stars here, for instance, and there. And, and then, uh, then we can eat the costumes. <laughs> right. We don't eat the costumes. Why? We, we eat them. Uh, no, we don't eat them. We don't eat them. No, no. Well, How uh, important is our daughter to us? <laughs> Very important. This important? Worth all this? May maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think should, so should we too. call for help? Yes. Yes. Yes, maybe. If we just ignore I'm, I'm immersed them. so deeply oh. in my character you now. Go I, on and I have difficulties to come out of it. You're finished guy. I'm, I'm I, I need some help. <laughs> um, this, this is really not the help I was looking for, but I'm... Hi! <laughs> Do you help me to, to eat their clothing? Um, uh, please, dear, dear sir, ma'am, leave I now! I clothing and you It would be best if you would leave yes. now. This is my knife! If you... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And um, that's how you will solve the problem with the simple fins. You need to breed more owl bears. So, um, I did that kind of. We, we, I think that part of the answer to this might be comedy. If if you're talking about what's fun to watch, uh, I mean, I. I I thought that was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, very, very entertaining to watch. And if the goal is to make entertainment, um, well, you have the example of, of drama, uh, immersive, you know, role playing, uh, and uh, a comedy. There, there's a, we'll all have to rethink maybe what, uh, what, what some of these opportunities will, will <laughs> contain. And I think that the sort of one natural thing to talk about then is like the format. Like how, because you are now running a D&D proto beta version of D&D 5 as the system you're running for, for doing this. Um, you also mentioned Witten's uh, yeah, recent foray into Forge style role playing. And yes. I, to me, the basic question, and that's a question to you guys, is like, what rule system or what format of role playing have you worked with that sort of is the best generator? of dramatic or comedic content and so on. Now I'm talking about rule systems and, and so on. Not necessarily setting, but like what mechanics? Do, do anyone have, of you have memories of sessions with a certain mechanic or in a certain game system? Like, okay, this was really, really entertaining to watch. It became more performative. Yeah. Well, if you're doing it for the camera, I would definitely go for cheap form games. Yes. Deep form, yep. yeah. Do, do, are you familiar with the form? Yeah, I guess the, at this point, almost everybody is familiar with the rulesless, very free form and very like heavily scenario-driven. Uh, a bit like this, actually. <laughs> like the form is targeted on a social situation, and you cut between a series of those scenes rather than having an open, I, oh, rather than having an open I, format campaign. I actually came here with the goal of learning more uh, about cheap form, but. Yeah. 
And the thing, for example, what I've seen was when uh, the chief from Guru Sophia Springs and the other chiefs were running a show on that very stage like five years ago in Robocon. Mm. And they were running a chief from game about reality TV show. And they had all these maneuvers for it. Kind of, if, if you put, put your hands like this, if your friend represents that you're now a cameraman, and then whatever you're zoom, zooming is going to be shown on television. And they also had like uh, boards for applause and laughter and whatever, and everyone was kind of involved. And I think that might work somewhat well with, with the ideas like hmm. the one you had. Yeah, that sounds fabulous. Yeah, yeah and also it's like it becomes a meta thing. Like we're making. TV entertainment out of the out of the the format of TV entertainment, um, but right. we're role playing it. So that's that's interesting. I mean, we've seen that's one one, but it, that's a it, it's a format that's been with us with Solmakotta. I mean, Jock, you've been running the um, uh, we had your um, games forever. The yeah, the Ricky Lake show has been running for like for always. So I think that that's it's a sound sound idea. Yeah, yeah. you got. It. Yeah, I, I think rules light is, is real. Yeah, so we're, we've been, uh, I, I did D&D &D, uh, partly because I know I could get more reach, uh, you know, obviously. But we're really playing D&D &D as a story game. I mean, we very, we roll the dice maybe twice an evening, you know, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's mostly just freeform storytelling and, and, and drama. And then... We did do a uh, in episode two. There will be a battle, and the battle we're going to use uh, do stop motion photography uh, to, uh, to to do the battle with the character voices uh, overlaid on top of it, to, and just to try to make it fun and kind of entertaining to watch. In the back. Uh, have you uh, actually watched a game system that have you been looking at uh, manuals for improvised theater because that thing that we just did, well, you brought it alarm. I mean, that's, it's yeah. a John Stone exercise. The uh, theater sports, if we look at, at the ways that this is now being, like improvised theater is being used as entertainment. I mean, there's, in Sweden at least, there's a, there's a format where you have theater sports that are filmed with sort of semi-celebrities doing it and so on. I think the difference is the continuation and the focus on story, because those John Stone improvisations are always aimed at sort of um, listening to what the first person is taking and making it more hilarious, and sort of it's a ping pong game where you have intensified absurdness. That's usually how it goes. Whereas role playing tries to maintain uh, sort of a stringent narrative. Although if it's way. comedy, it would. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah even if it's comedy, it does have a more stringent narrative. But yes, I mean that's one of the reasons to look at theater history, and especially theater from the 60s, is that there was a lot of experimentation with improvised and, and audience participation theater during those years. So yes, I think there are great lessons to be learned from minding that as well as role playing. Because this format that we're looking for, maybe it will not end up being role playing for, for media, but it will be something of its own. It develops its own language, its own grammar, its own like, tropes, and, and so on, as it grows. Maybe grow away from role-playing or, or whatever, but this is where we are. We, we, can live, yeah. we, can, we can infuse it with our knowledge, but also, as you say, take But I from, think improvisation is probably a, yeah. a great place to mm -hmm. capture from. Uh, that game that they were talking about is called The Upgrade, and it's downloadable achievement in the world, so you can play it any time. Okay. I have a question for you. Back in the 90s, I think, we used to say that, in the, certainly in the local community in Finland, one of the distinctions of role-playing and, and everything else is that you cannot role-play for an audience. Mm. And that, that even if you were to build a format, like a game like the upgrade that actually is built to contain an audience as well, uh, it's not role-playing anymore. So you both have uh, experience of running games with cameras present. Do you feel and do you, your players feel that the role-playing turns into performance? Do you want to start? Well, uh, yeah, I'll start on that. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to go back to the snowboarding video thing. We're, we're, I, I, you know, snowboarding videos haven't replaced snowboarding. It, you know, the idea is that uh, if we can use media, my, my whole goal is to use media to promote the core activity itself, right? So I, I look at it as I, I'm not 
in any way trying to replace or redefine what role playing is. Um, but at the same time, I, 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 I disagree strongly with the notion that it wouldn't be role playing. I think one of the beautiful things about role playing is that it's a very broad net. And you have everything from, you know, very crunchy systems like Burning Wheel, fourth edition, D, or D&D, &D, various editions, to very freeform games, you know, like Fiasco or Jeep Form even more so. I mean, you, you have a, 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 an umbrella that's big enough to encompass all that. Uh, why not, once again, uh, add another definition to what role playing can be because that's the beauty of role playing is it can be so many different types of things. So, um, you, all right, what do you want to add to it? Yeah, I mean, for me, one of the reasons that we built uh, the spiral the way that we did in the end is just to address that because I did not want it to end up being a playing for the camera. Uh, that was absolutely the last thing I wanted because we, I, I, I assumed, and I think we were right in that, if we did that we would get uh, improvised acting or we would get uh, sort of faking it for the camera or attempting to act, as you say, like being very, like thinking about the audience all the time. So that's why we, we said, uh, okay, we're setting this in, in, in an art squat that has the social rule during this biennale, this exhibition that we're playing. They have the social rule that everybody should film it. So it becomes a normalized part of your media saturated everyday life. I mean, at the party these days, there are cameras everywhere. We're starting to, so that, that's, we say, okay, this is then the community. They're using their iPhones all the time to document their lives. That's just normal. And that's to get away from the feeling that this is being recorded. Rather, they feel this is our normal life. This is how we roll. Uh, so that's, it's a very good question. And I think you have to take that into account when you, at least when you do LARPing, you have to design in a position for the cameraman. There's, with Brody, I, I started looking at old performance piece videos, and there's one like with people are sh like showering in pig's blood and fucking each other naked on stage and so on, and performance art from the 60s. And they, they, that was filmed. And then at one point, a camera is photographing the cameraman. And you see the cameraman is right in there with his huge battery belt and this, this old like, recorder and he's butt naked and he's in there. <laughs> <This> is, uh, <laughs> it's like, and that to me is like, oh, that's how you film these things. So that the cameraman has to be in the story. He has to be inside there and be a character as well. So, so the, the, and I think we, we really work with that, with the documentarians in the spiral. They are playing documentarians. So they can go up and be in people's face and ask, what are you doing? Because then you get good footage, like the angle footage. You get an interview situation. But to him, he's just in game. Because a part of the game is playing a star, playing an arch star and being interviewed. So I think, yes, designing in the cameras or solving the hidden camera problem, which is like huge technical problem. Or, and or you get the, shit footage. Or the, yeah. the camera becomes a character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I have an experience of there being actual TV cameras. There was a Finnish, some Finnish youth program at some point wanted to make a little insert about role playing games and they, you know, through various connections, gave yeah. my game and, and actually shot a piece of, bit of it. Cool. And, uh, I have to say, and there was like a cameraman and a reporter there. So very yeah. specific, like two outsiders and they, you know, you know, first they ask questions about what we're doing and stuff like that. They filmed a bit of the game. Right. Sorry, I don't think they ever used the game footage uh, in the end. Uh, I don't know if it was a decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I think I have to comment that you, if the camera was good, you really don't notice it. I mean, it's, it's amazing how it's just, it just disappears. Yeah, it... It, there's this period, I've talked to reality show producers uh, who've had, and, and there's just this period that people are conscious of it, and then eventually uh, they forget about it. What, what do you got queued yeah. up here, Mark? No, 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 I'm just, just it's like showing stuff in the background while we're talking, so we have just, oh, okay, okay. just like, the, we got it. like footage. Uh, that's one of the, the starts of the show that's in there. But yeah, anyways, we, I mean, we, this confirms exactly what we were at um, to prove our seal, uh, the game that this artist did and that you saw. That was shot by a very prominently visible, uh, just, the, he didn't try to hide himself at all. It was a guy from Vice who usually shoots for, B, shoots for BBS. And he was just there in really, really close with his big fucking camera and so on. But after the first two days, I really felt that he both got it, how to move in the therapy sessions, which was a large part of the game, how to film them, and then be out of the way and not be in our immediate field of vision. 
So it's sort of it, it's that process of learning to trust the documentary photographer, allowing him into the world. That's the other strategy. And that's, of course, the keep it simple strategy. It's like, no, just forget about it. Forget about 360. Forget about the complete illusion. Uh, just get good footage. Yeah. Because people will, as you say, forget the cameraman. Uh, but for shorter games, I think it can be really intrusive. In the beginning, I thought it was really, really hard playing when he was in the room. It, was like, it, it did felt like I'm now performing. I am not role playing. And that's, if there's anything specific we need to get out of this, there's an aesthetic of acting or non acting that can only be done through not stage acting, but rather playing. Okay, if, got a couple, yeah. couple more I mean, that, that would be the counter argument to my argument just now. But yeah. I mean, that, that's self-awareness. I mean, that, that's the self-awareness that, to me, I treat it as it can be a danger because you become self-aware and you start sort of performing. But as you say, it can have a positive effect of saying, like, somebody's actually watching this, so I better, do, uh, I better like, become more expressive or, or do things. I mean, in my experience, like, all the mm -hmm. all the time are more or less self-aware. Yeah. Even immersed ones, Right. Mm. By, by the way, that's an amazing book. I mean, that was Nordic LARP. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. There is. Yes. All right. Um, uh, we're quartered half. I'm getting the, the signs to uh, wind down. Uh, I hope that, um, uh, well, I feel like I learned a lot today. I hope I didn't come across as somebody who had some sort of answers to this. I really am uh, trying to explore this idea and the best way is put yourself out there and start collecting ideas. So thank you all for um, sharing your experiences with me and those of you who came up on stage and played around a little bit. Uh, I'll uh, edit that together and see if it's, uh, we can judge for ourselves if it's entertaining to watch. Yep, yep. All right. Yeah. Um, it's been awesome sharing some, some clips and so on. And um, yeah, it's, been, um, it's, been, it, it's the first steps on a long road. And I would like to do some archaeological work as well. So if people have any in-game videos at all, uh, we would be, I think both of us, really, really excited about seeing them. So just reach me through the spiral uh, or on Facebook or whatever and just poke me. Um, I would be, it would really, really be fun to collect some good footage out there and see what we can do with this. Thank you so I, much. I'm yeah. on Facebook as Peter Atkinson. Yeah. Happy to uh, friend up with anybody who wants to. Love to have some friends here in Finland. So, yeah. All right, thank you all. Cool. Yeah, and I'm also going to do some more shameless promotion for the Spiral and hand out in-game cash um, that can be used in the game when it launches in August. And tune into Gile to watch the Spiral uh, in September.
Ropecón 91.3